Good evening and welcome to Worldview with me, Irubad Ibrahim. This past week, heads of governments of Commonwealth of Nations met in the United Kingdom at a summit whose theme was toward a common future. The four cardinal objectives of the summit were prosperity, security, sustainability, and equity. Tonight we ask, is the Commonwealth of Nations relevant to third world countries like the Republic of Ghana, or is a painful and stark reminder of the residual influence of colonialism? To help me do the discussion, we have to my immediate left, Honorable Caesar Kale, um, who formerly was a presidential staffer. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And then we have Mr. Kuku Jani, an expert on matters of foreign affairs. Sir, Thank you. you're welcome once pleasure, again. Pleasure. And then Dr. Ebenezer Ashley, an economist. Doc, you're welcome. Uh, thanks for And Doc, just before we came on set, I saw you pouring over. Mm -hmm. some documents, so to speak. <laughs> um, I'll ask you up front, do okay. you think uh, the things we have witnessed in the past five or so days, and His Excellency our President should be on his way back to Ghana now, okay. do you think it's relevant for um, 53 nations from around the world to go to the UK and have this Commonwealth Summit every two years? Uh, thank you very much. Once again, good evening to our cherished uh, viewers. Uh, that is uh, <laughs> what a way to start the entire program. But that is very good. If you look at it uh, holistically, there is an underlying objective, and we have to find out whether the objective underpinning the formation of the Commonwealth has been lost or it is still relevant. Uh, now, the countries coming together has some benefits, you know, and if you are to look at it from that particular angle, you will say it is still relevant. But if you are to uh, put some figures uh, to one of the main benefits, which has to do with the facilitation of trade among member countries, then we will realize that indeed uh, the fraternity, the union that we're looking out of the member countries is actually, uh, you know, regressing. It is not progressing. It is regressing. But on the whole, the existence of the uh, Commonwealth, you know, of nations in, in itself is quite uh, good. If you have to take a retrospective uh, uh, analysis of the whole thing, you look at the formation in itself. It dates back to the uh, 16th century when Britain, you know, began to expand its empire or her empire to other jurisdictions and they resorted to the uh, colonization by two major methods. That is by settlement or the use of British overlords. So in places like India, there were British overlords. But in places like Australia, there were settlements, and also to some extent South Africa and others. You know. So uh, this continued till the 20th century, uh, when the British government realized that the profits you know, derived from these countries that uh, were called dominions, though the territories were then called dominions, the profits were then dwindling. So there was a need for some economic novelty, and that uh, gave birth to the Commonwealth. So there will be a Commonwealth among all the, uh, uh, the colonies, you know, so you'll be able to move from one place to the other. By 1931, we realized there have been some reforms when there was room for internal governance, and four countries emerged out of this. We have Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa. So in 1991, they had some amount of independence, but not outright. It means there was no need directly for uh, the British monarch to send someone to come and govern, but then internally they had their own arrangements. Now this also helped with the, the Second World War, which ended in 1945. And lo and behold, you know, Britain and her allies benefited from the colonization because the colonies had to support Britain and her allies in the war. So by 1945, Britain and allies had, had been declared winners of the war. But the good aspect of it is that immediately after the Second World War, you realize those countries that were not independent began to fight for their independence. So that led to the emergence of India. Ghana also followed. We had Nigeria. But it was only South Africa that had to wait till 1994. And also, uh, there have been some amount of developments. And the name has actually evolved. It started with the name the British Commonwealth. In the 50s, it changed to 
the Commonwealth of Nations, and that has been maintained. You know, with the uh, Commonwealth Secretariat established in 1965 uh, in the UK with uh, offices in some key areas. So as we mentioned, we have uh, about 53 uh, member nations. Two of them are uh, just official uh, are members, but not active. You talk about uh, the Tuvalu, you know, and then I think uh, uh, Naukau, Naukau also. You know, the two of them are just official members, but not actually are small territories that are part of the Union. So if you look at it from this angle, you realize it brings uh, a section of the entire world's countries together, and that has been consolidated in a way. You know, but uh, I think if you look at your question, where it is still necessary, we need it more than ever. Because let me take just one benefit, which has to do the promotion of trade among member countries. The benefits from trade uh, seem to be you know, going down. In 2008, the total trade among Commonwealth member countries was about eight, about four trillion uh, US dollars. By 2012, it has reduced 120 billion US dollars. 2016, it has reduced to 91 billion US dollars. So you realize that there is about negative 97.727% decrease in the volume of, of trade in terms of value among the Commonwealth member countries. So it looks as if now most of them belong, you know, <laughs> uh, just in, I would say, in form. But then in real practice, when it comes to uh, the trade, the individual member countries seem to be looking elsewhere for major trade. But it doesn't mean some individual countries are not benefiting. We may come to that. There are some individual African countries that are still holding strong ties with uh, the UK. For example, Kenya, about 80% or more of the vegetables she exports to the European market finds its way to UK alone. So UK absorbs over 80% of the vegetables from uh, Kenya. If you look at countries like Mauritius, Botswana, and then Seychelles, more than 10% of their GDP in terms of export, you know, goes to UK alone. Okay. So there are quite um, a that, that is, uh, yeah, um, and Doc is an economist. Mm -hmm. That is quite a profound preamble. Okay. Um, but Doc, I'll stick with you for well, a short while. Well. Um, some people have argued that economically, Great Britain is a pale shadow of its former self. Yeah. The grandeur and glory of the 16th century are all gone. So why would we still tie umbilical cords to the United Kingdom? A, a very good one. A, 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 that's a very good question. Now, it depends on the benefits you get, actually. Now, if you look at it holistically, unless we want to look at it individually, but as Ghana and then other African countries, why is this still necessary? Uh, so long as you are not ready to uh, uh, absorb whatever you produce internally or only uh, on the West African market, but you'll be looking elsewhere, it still uh, suffices to look beyond the shores of this country. And being with the Commonwealth, you know, makes it somewhat easier for you to have access to the European market. As we speak, you, you realize uh, even the, those individuals that are described as citizens of the Commonwealth nations yes. have the opportunity to vote, you know, in general elections in the United Kingdom and in some local elections as well. And so if you look at the fact that this uh, political you know, level... But all of these I'm things consolidate to, the United Kingdom. Of what benefit are they to Ghana, for example? The, you, that's a very good question. Yeah. Because if you create the enabling environment for outsiders to uh, make contribution to your, the growth of your democracy, you end up benefiting. Even though the outsider might think he or she has the opportunity to contribute strongly. But if you look at it from our angle, we need to increase our trade so that we'll be able to benefit strongly. Okay, but there are some you. strings attached. You, okay, know? No you problem. have the produce, and then you are told the quality is not up to okay. the expected standard. And okay. therefore, you may have to return the goods, okay. repackage, and then resend. Okay. And so this way, we have a challenge. But I will not falter okay. uh, the, uh, Bri the Great Britain uh, okay. so much. In okay. some cases, we condone Okay, I'll, I'll, com I'll come back to you, Doc. Very well, very um, well. Mr. Kukujani. At a time of protectionism and cessationism around the world, the UK itself is getting out of Brexit. Um, Brexit, through Brexit, is getting out of the Eurozone yeah, okay. sometime next year. Why then should we be concerned about an umbrella group 
that caters to the needs of only the United Kingdom and does very little to better the lot of third world countries? Well, I think we've had a very long relationship with the United Kingdom from the time of slavery. And after the decolonization, I think England felt it good to have some of these colonies still tied to it. Mm -hmm. One because of trade, one because of friendship, talk about free speech, uh, and all that goes with it. <clears throat> but um, I think we as Africans have not used the Commonwealth very well. We do not expect when you have a, a group of people, for a group of people to be giving you things that you, you expect from them, you have to make certain moves for, for, for them to realize exactly what you want. Um, I say this, I, I want to make this point very, very strongly right now. In terms of trade, <coughs> it looks like we've lost out a little bit with them. But I believe that with the Secretariat in the United Kingdom, if our policymakers have very strong links with them, a strong relationship with them, they might probably advise us on technical issues and how to move things, because those facilities are there. Recently, I, I read a report about, uh, from the WHO, 4 million 300 nurses needed across the, across the globe. In the United Kingdom, for example, they need huge number of nurses. Canada is the same. A lot of countries need nurses. And somehow, if you take Ghana, for example, we are not using those facilities that are across, across those parts of the world to create employment for huge numbers of nurses around Ghana who government somehow cannot employ or don't have the monies to pay. These are, these are areas where we need to be very aggressive and, and use a lot of knowledge and expertise. Go to the WTO, go to uh, the Secretariat in the UK and ask them how do we create jobs in terms of trade, in terms of nursing commercial, uh, nursing, commercial nurses across the world. This point is very, very important. And I wish government officials would take this out. Because I know that when there are structures within such huge organizations, there are opportunities. It is your experts who have to go in and find out what do we gain from them. And for us to expect them to come and tell us, come and do this, it's, it's totally unacceptable. It, they would not do that. Um, but having said that, it's a non-government non organization that has been around for a long time. The Queen happens to be the head. And um, every two years, they'll meet and just talk about issues that is of common interest to them. But what is said and what happens behind doors is what you should be interested in. Yeah, but beyond the talk shop, mm. it is said, when all is said, what gets done? Mm -hmm. um, you don't hear of any working groups that emerge out of such Commonwealth summits. So is it necessary for us to continue going there? There, are, there, are, there, are, there are working groups. If you go to the Secretariat in the UK, Marlborough Street, I think it is saying, you, there's a whole Commonwealth Secretariat that harbors the 53 countries that we have now with some of their complaints and have them in policy making and, and trying to advise on technical issues. I don't know the, the, the sort of uh, counterparts that we have in Ghana that are supposed to be addressing this issue. And that is why I mentioned the, 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 the area of nursing. And, 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 and if, Brexit, if Brexit is to succeed and go through next year, those who support Brexit are saying, now look, we now have to work with the Commonwealth. I'm, I'm a beneficiary of the Commonwealth guys who went to the UK years ago. And immigration becomes a very huge subject in, in the Commonwealth. So visa acquisition wasn't too much of a problem. You know, we, are, oh, we can go. They needed us to come and work for them, to benefit from them, and they'll benefit from us. When they entered into the EU, all the script changed. And now their focus was more on their, their, their neighbors mm -hmm. and their relatives in the EU, and they did more business with them and social economic issues. Now that they are coming out, it is important that our governments should start positioning themselves now in how, as Commonwealth countries, we can benefit from the Brexit. And I think this issue is a very, very important one. Um, um, thank you so much. Honorable Caesar. <laughs> Um, look, some have argued that, well, we've had the Queen of England um, head this group for God knows how many decades, and soon Prince Charles is going to take over the fort. Um, what will we see differently? Um, the EU has been a viable market for us. All of us remember the EPA agreement between ECOWAS mm. and the European Union. 
of what economic value is the membership of a third world country like Ghana and the rest of Africa <coughs> to the Commonwealth of Nations? Thank you very much, uh, Erbar. I think that, well, my colleagues have uh, said many important things about the relevance of uh, I mean, the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. And indeed, some experts have even described the Commonwealth as a relic, you know, a crumb a crumbling empire of the British. And this is an anachronism, you know. <laughs> so people have their own perception about it. I remember even some African countries like Gambia, you know, had to terminate their, you know, membership. Uh, membership and all those kinds of things. So people are around the globe, especially those who belong to the whole organization, have their own perception. But what I, I have a different perception. For the mere fact that even Ghana belongs to the Commonwealth alone is very important. The mere fact that we belong to that international recognized body. Remember, the Commonwealth, if we take the countries, it's about 27% of the total countries in the world. Islam mass alone is about 21%. It controls about more than 10 trillion GDP of the world, you know, you know GDP. Okay. You know. And so the Commonwealth is an important organization that, and you know, in, in, in the, in the, in the, in the, on the globe, we live, you know, strongly by our ties with various bodies. Okay. Now, when everybody knows that oh, Ghana will belong to the Commonwealth, and over the years, we've seen a critical role that this organization has played in Ghana as, as far as our, 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 our you know, uh, uh, security, economic, education, and the like. I'll come back to your economic days we are talking about. Yes, Look at, even in Ghana, yeah. we have had a lot of young guys and even some of our you know elders and leaders who have had the opportunity to go to you know uh, London and other places on Commonwealth scholarship on the educational for it has helped a lot you can talk about thousands free scholarship and so that alone has helped Ghana to be able to even build its economy as the current president was he a beneficiary of any Commonwealth um, scholarship it may be difficult to well, say, but he may be, given his age. Yes, given his age, mm -hmm. but I, I cannot say mm -hmm. for a fact. Mm -hmm. You see, but that notwithstanding, okay. by the complaints, and you remember even when the, uh, the, the Queen actually, you know, uh, proclaimed that his son will be yeah. succeeding her. I mean, it, it attracted a lot of uproar. Yeah. Some people say, no, why should, and others are suggesting other names and all those kinds mm -hmm. of things. But people mm -hmm. feel that it's still that, you know, uh, no, monarchical no, kind of, you know. And so I think that in spite of all the shortcomings of the Commonwealth, it has had a serious impact on world peace. It has had a serious impact on even defense, security. Remember, the Commonwealth nation has helped a lot of countries. Apartheid, for instance, it was through the Commonwealth. That you it know, ended. That it ended. Okay. And we know of countries that... The, 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 the Commonwealth has actually set up, even the Independent Electoral Commission helped draft their constitutions, you know, in terms of defense. And even in Ghana, you know, that we have had a lot of technical support from the Commonwealth. And so in spite of its shortcoming, I'm not even looking at the trade you were you are talking about. I've, I've heard suggestions that the Commonwealth is even attempting to set up a free zone, where we can have a free zone trade among ourselves. And some, you know, documents are read to suggest that even those within the Commonwealth, I mean, trading among ourselves, is, is about more than 50% of the total world, you know, trading capacity. And so I think that it isn't that bad. There's no organization with some of these difficulties or some of these uh, uh, arguments from other people, their mind that, oh, it, it seems to be monopolized by a particular, you know, uh, country like the, the, the Queen and uh, whatever it is. But I think that Belonging to that particular decision alone is very important. That is why Manawasa made a statement at the, I mean at the meeting. He says that he's going to bring back uh, Zimbabwe because Zimbabwe was suspended in 2002 because of the, the, the human rights abuse the by problem. Mugabe. Okay. Then in 2003, Mugabe opted out. But Manawasa is saying that he thinks that belonging to the Commonwealth is very, very important. And so he's going to bring back... Is it a win or a loss for Pan-Africanism? 
Because you mentioned the IHM is the Gambia. Yeah. Now the Gambia is going back into the Commonwealth. It's already and there. Robert Mugabe took Zimbabwe out of yeah. it. This new guy is going to take us yeah. back. Yeah. Pan African leaders wanted to quit, to call it quits with the Commonwealth. It cannot happen. You know something? Because whether we like it or yes, the Commonwealth are about 90% of the countries are the British colonies. And that's why some experts say that. In fact, the British, uh, uh, the, British uh, the, the, the UK government decided to set up the Commonwealth just to make itself economically and politically still, you know, in existence really? because it's lost all the colonies. And so all these countries under the Commonwealth are the, it's like a family. But whether you like it or not, you cannot fall out of it. Mm. And so all, any of the African countries, particularly those that were actually colonized by the, 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 the British, cannot easily do away with the, the, the whole block because it has a lot of benefits. Now, when the, the, the UK or even the Commonwealth hears that any of its you know, member is in, in dire need of security, and look at what happened in Nigeria. You know, that's why Nigeria was suspended when uh, uh, Asenia Abacha executed this uh, Ogoni, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, activist. Mm. When Sarua and Kowe were executed, Ken Sarua, Ken Sarua. Ken Sarua and were executed. Mm. Nigeria was suspended. You know, they look at, in fact, countries, especially within the, the, the membership, if we are not actually practicing good governance, democracy, and all those things, the Commonwealth, even though does not have that kind of uh, 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 rigid sanctions or maybe the ability to take some sanctions against you, the suspension alone is, is enough. You know, people say that the Commonwealth can only just bite, it can't bite. Yes, it is true. But the other, they, they, they have other forms of Biting. also putting their membership or other countries in check. They suspend you from all their benefits. They, can't even, they will tell you that you can't trade with any of the countries again, and all, can, all those measures help a lot. Okay. Um, Doc, yeah. Honorable Caesar makes quite a good point. Yeah. The prolific you know, contribution Commonwealth has brought to the third world okay. in matters of education, human rights protection, and all that. Mm. But we need to admit that the, the UK is a receding economic power. Yeah, and again, why do we gloat over such a group that has no envoy the way the European Union has an envoy in Accra, for example, a group that can't punch uh, any weight, so to speak, on the floor of the United Nations? Nobody even mentions the Commonwealth and on matters of international relations and global affairs. Don't you think it, this is just a little straw we are clinging to only because we need the, you know, fatherly protection and guidance of a former colonial master? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. A little clarification from uh, the preceding submission. The Commonwealth actually is made up of countries. It is a political organization made up of independent nations with some dependencies because we rely on each other for trade and security and support. Uh, that is, uh, so it's, it's a political uh, organization uh, in, in itself. Now, if you also look at the fact, uh, there was a question as to uh, the, uh, the Commonwealth, you know, members being in it and whether it is obligatory or they would recede. It is actually voluntary. Membership to the Commonwealth is voluntary. But then if you sit back, just as Caesar said, and you observe the the extent to which it facilitates trade among member nations. You may be... How does it do that? So, does someone sit in London and send cables? No, the the that, EU has got that, an that envoy is, that, here that to facilitate trade between us and the European Union. Yeah. But the Commonwealth has no diplomatic representative in Accra. How the High Commission... The, the, <coughs> you know, well, when it comes to that, actually, the, the mentioned education, some amount of security, Let's look at some of the benefits and to, sh to throw more light on the, the need for the existence of the common. If you look at education, for example, uh, not only do we talk about scholarships, you know, but it has also enabled uh, us to be able to train our people to conform to international standards. I uh, look at the existence of the common, and yeah. prior to that, you know, it helped us to have the national image and identity. As we speak, we have quite a number of languages in Ghana, but then we've been able to emerge with a national language, which makes it easier for us to be identified within and without the, the country. So if you look at 
this aspect. And then when it comes to security, the member countries are able to protect one another. And also in times of crisis, the Commonwealth mobilizes you know, troops, resources to help the affected nation. A case in point is Sierra Leone. When the civil war ravaged the country's infrastructure, the Commonwealth had to pull resources together to help rebuild the, the country. You know, so uh, some of the benefits might not be overt. And the fact that we have uh, Britain as the figurehead is where perhaps uh, it calls for some amount of worry. Yeah. But if you look at the contribution of individual member countries, it is something that is quite uh, encouraging and uh, requires some am amount of uh, uh, coordination. You see, it has promoted a strong friendship among member countries. Okay. And if you look at it, the statistically, if you look at it from an economic perspective, the most of the member countries of the uh, Commonwealth are net important countries. All right, the, uh, with about, uh, the average is about 11% of GDP okay. for most of them. But we have two countries that are net exporters, Singapore and Malaysia. Yeah. You know, and how did how do they do it? Because they've not ended. You see, they are neighboring countries. And Malaysia has about 85% 80, of her GDP being from exports. And she relies extensively on her sister country, Singapore, for her export activities. You know, so you look at the fact that they are neighbors, perhaps with common uh, religious background, and the fact that they also belong to the Commonwealth okay. makes it easier okay. uh, for them to okay. facilitate trade among okay. them. So okay. these are some of the okay. examples that we can also tap into uh, from our end of the, the world. Okay. Uh, that not necessarily looking up to Britain, you know, but then how do you, uh, you know, take advantage of the union to advance and accelerate your pace of economic development and growth? Okay. That is the okay. bottom line. Um, Mr. Jani, mm. there's the argument of duplicity or dupl duplication of regional welfare or mutual benefit for various countries within a region. Um, Doc makes quite a strong point that the Commonwealth provides a conducive enabling environment for member states to offer support to each other or one another. But if you mention Sierra Leone, ECO was cobbled together, ECO mock. Mm -hmm. So at the sub-regional level, these are things we can easily achieve. Mm -hmm. So therefore, yes. do you think a group like that would need reforms? Yeah. Uh, so that the sense of entitlement that yeah. is enjoyed by the UK will be taken away so that we, we can own it. Mm. I, think, I think that's the bit of yes. this discussion. That yes, look, sir. What are the expectations that we have of the yes, Commonwealth? Sir. Does it be realized or not? Yes, sir. And I think, as I said, I am pro-Commonwealth. But I think what the Commonwealth has, has, has missed over time is what the Marshall Plan did to Europe after the World War when the Americans decided, look, this place has been ravaged. We need to send in about six hundred million dollars, six hundred billion dollars, to reinvent mm. the place up. Mm. And 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 that is what uh, the UK, after the imperialism and all that, that went. They've not been able to do to their to the other uh, affiliated countries. And that that I think has been the worry. And it all it all it all it, it's all to do with money. But the psychology of it is is also very excellent. Look at what the Chinese have done in terms of the Belt and Road Initiative. You just copped on to us. We are not worried about your politics, but we will work with you and we will provide some sort of uh, money without asking too many questions. That is what the Commonwealth should have done many, many years ago. And so if you mention those key areas, uh, democracy, rule of law, yeah. uh, common language of English, yeah. and trade, what have we done in trade? You know, they, they know we're a poverty-stricken country. They know we don't have money. They know, they also know that they've been able to, in terms of uh, trade, they've benefited a lot from us we since said. the time of the tr slave trade. So look, <laughs> if we are able to support them, we will also benefit from them eventually. So help them with infrastructure, help them with uh, their health care, help them with education, and let's put them a lot more money so that we'll benefit, uh, the, the benefit of both sides. And I think the Commonwealth has lacked, even though their mandate is a bit different, they should have conserved better they, they are not they are not the IMF they are not the World Bank they are not the and United Nations they don't even have a central bank yes Ghana so, as a member country cannot go to Commonwealth yes. to solicit for loans that's right so if you don't have this 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 tenants it's difficult but you know UK is a very strong country in the world and if it wants to link you up it is linkages it has strong linkages the world the world Bank doesn't belong to any political party in America 
But when you're in power, you have you have that that system of trying to work with it with a, the uh, J P Morgan and Chase's and uh, uh, all, all these banks on Wall Street. So the World Bank should also have this secretariat in the UK should have had strong offices that can ensure that its colonial, its past colonies are also doing very, very well. Uh, and, and, and that is where we are at the moment. I think we cannot blame them totally. We Africans too should be asking ourselves, what is it that we can benefit from them? How can we, how can we have a script that they will understand? See, the normal issue happens that when we have a lot of Africans going to Europe, they do not know how to negotiate with these people. They don't have a common language to talk. They are, they, 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 they are not sure how to convince and to pitch and to benefit from them. And that is where, uh, the, in the diaspora, we have Ghanaians who have lived there for a long time. Some of them work in Chase Mountain Park. They work in the system. And we must bring them back to Ghana, let them know what we need, get them back to go and talk to people that don't. Because some of them go to Congress. There are Africans who have access to Congress. They have the White House and all this, to the British Parliament, there are people, there are Ghanaians who have worked there for a very long time who can help Ghana to, because they've been to school with them, they've worked with them, they have access to, to this sort of uh, uh, facilities. We don't, in Ghana, if, we, if, we, if, if Europeans come and we have to talk to them, they hardly understand what we want and where we want to go because our script is very, very different and our, our expertise and knowledge in trying to negotiate with them it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, what um, um, Honorable Caesar, some have argued, well, the French have been a bit, you know, upfront, saying that, yes, these are our conditions. You will still use the CIFA as your legal tender, and it cuts across their former colonies. You repatriate some of the returns you make as a country uh, to Paris. Is this Commonwealth thing not a shrewd way by the UK? To continue to build that level of clout and influence on former colonies. Yes, of course, we are free to use our own currencies. Some have decided to use their own languages, so to speak. But isn't there a backdoor way of building influence equal to the magnitude of that of Paris over for former colonial uh, French colonies here? Yeah, I think to that extent, I agree perfectly with you. That's why I stated that some experts even think that the formation of the Commonwealth on its alone is, 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 is just to ensure that Britain or UK sell, uh, uh, get very you know, important in the world affairs in, in respect of political and uh, economic you know, issues. But I think that uh, in as much as they, they, they are using that as a conduit to still control the affairs of, you know, uh, 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 all this, all the colonies, and also make themselves very relevant. I think that, I mean, member countries see benefits by and large. You know, I was talking about the, the trade within the Commonwealth, Commonwealth member countries. Yeah. You know, experts suggest that as of 2014, intra trade among uh, Commonwealth countries alone. He led up to four hundred thirteen trillion dollars. But did, did Commonwealth midwife that? That isn't that countries because of proximity no. and shared interests, yes. with or without the Commonwealth, no, would still trade between themselves. It's, 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 I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an international group together. But that's assessment okay. that if the four of us here we come together as a body, and even if we have our individual, you know, uh, uh, way of doing things or earning a living. But if they want to actually assess within the, the four of us what we have been able to do with our lives, they may count it as because of our partnership. That is the idea behind it. And so what I think perhaps maybe some of the problems or the issues that uh, 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 I mean Cornwall should be looking at critically is this, uh, uh, what is it say? Uh, this uh, 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 free zone trade you are talking about. If they are able to set up a free zone trade, then of course I believe that smaller countries for like how Ghana... Many, with my honorable Sir, for how many years have we been discussing ECO as a common currency within yeah. the sub-region? No, for that one, don't do it. Because the fact is that 
the Commonwealth is not like the other regional bodies that we even know. One, they don't have any strong, you know, legal framework that actually binds all of us. There's no any Commonwealth has no charter, no That's working true. document. No, but I'm saying that there's no there's no strong legal framework. For instance, if you want to, apart from the charter, what will be the sanction of a Commonwealth country maybe uh, uh, attacking another smaller country? Or maybe some human rights, level of human rights. We don't have those kinds of strange, you know, stringent uh, kind of uh, uh, legal framework to control all those things. Okay. Look at many of the Commonwealth uh, 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 countries are struggling with HIV and AIDS. Malaria and other smaller diseases are still prevalent. What have they done? What, 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 what have we been able to do as an international body to be able to ensure that uh, there's no more malaria, there's no more I mean, HIV and AIDS and all those kinds of dreadful diseases still prevalent among member countries? For me, that is the, the, the problem. Now, because, and that will make the whole, I mean, anybody belonging to that body relevant. Because you belong to a body to derive some benefits. And the benefits, well, we know, in terms of education, we know it has helped. In terms of security, we know it has helped. Technical support, in terms of political you know, support and all those things. But going forward, people think that we should go beyond that. And that, if we even, if we even look at it, many of the Commonwealth countries that are now seeking partnership with other countries like China, you know, uh, uh, Russia, France, it's, it's creating a problem within the group. I don't know whether you have come across that. So that's one of the pain of the, the emerging trend of you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the stigmatization of the whole body progressing. That's why I think that, yes, people may think that it's, it's, it's a UK kind of agenda, but by and large, it has actually helped. It has helped if he really mentioned Commonwealth member, uh, 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 I, mean, uh, uh, I mean, citizens from Commonwealth countries have the opportunity to even exercise their franchise mm -hmm. within some of the territories. That alone is an achievement. That alone, for me, is an achievement. So I think that in spite of all the small, small, small problems, what we can do is rather to make it a formidable body that may have a proper legal framework, apart from the charter and those other things, so we'll be able to move like the, how the UN is. Okay. We'll be able to move like even how ECOWAS is. We'll be able to move like how, you know, other economic bodies, like the NAFTA and COA. Okay. So that at least we know that this is a body that can actually help us to come out of poverty. And, okay, thank you. Okay. And, see the, and Doc, yeah. there is this point that needs to be made. Mm -hmm. The Commonwealth has no no head in this modern state, and you took us down history lane. Yeah in the past five decades, five and a half decades, yeah, yeah. half a century, yeah. so to speak, it's been under the leadership and tutelage of Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Now that Prince Charles is being thrown into the mix, Buckingham Palace is going to witness some tectonic shifts here and there. How do you envisage the future of a group that was under the adult and mature leadership and guidance of the queen and much more vibrant and younger people uh, because the tradition is going to continue from prince charles mm. and monarchies evolve won't that affect the outlook and raison d'etre the main reason the commonwealth was established well uh, thank you very much your description perhaps uh, means there is some amount of doubt with regards to the reign of Prince Charles. But as you rightly mentioned, yeah. you see, uh, monarchs evolve, and we know society also evolves. We okay. find ourselves in a technological age, okay. uh, which perhaps the Queen might not be too strong in the known. When it I comes doubt to whether she's on Twitter. Yeah, there's, there you go. Facebook. She might have people <laughs> in charge of those uh, okay. in the modern uh, social networks for her. But perhaps personally, she may, it may be read to her and her responses may be tight. Uh, but the Prince Charles might be more you know, prone to uh, these technologies and will also be more prone to the contemporaries and therefore may be open to suggestions of member countries than perhaps the Queen. Because the Queen might come 
uh, from a conservative background. But the, the son might be a bit liberal and um, perhaps maybe open to suggestions. And this may make a very significant uh, difference in the forward movement of the Commonwealth. Let me just add a little bit to the two contributions. This is talked about uh, member countries trading with others like China and the effect. It is true. In 2000, as of 2016, Nigeria's major oil trading partner was India. In 2017, India shifted come to the United States. What saved Nigerian economy, you know, was the fact that U.S. decided to trade directly with Nigeria and ended with a uh, petroleum uh, trade of about six billion U.S. dollars, which was an improvement of about 3.5 recorded earlier in 2016. So when the member countries uh, shift come with regards to trade, it affects the progress of other member countries. That is very true. You know, so as the uh, perhaps the, I would say the sun takes over, there may be some amount of uh, leverages or some leeway that would allow member countries to uh, rewrite or revise their uh, trading scripts and then see how best they relate to uh, one another. And you also ask about the fact that we have Brexit. Here is Britain exiting and focusing more so on So why they need the for us to be part of a grouping yes, and the UK give back to? Yes, the, the, the truth is that Britain uh, herself cannot live in isolation. The major reason for the Brexit has to do with the common clause in the EU, which has to do with identifying every member of EU country as your citizen and according the member the equal opportunity and access to facilities employment and everything. That is where the citizens uh, began to cry wolf. But regards to the, member the membership of the Commonwealth, there are some exceptions. And what membership uh, our member countries are looking for, especially has to do with trade. Ours is not too much of uh, perhaps the direct uh, opportunities in terms of citizenship and what have you, but then facilitating trade among member countries to increase the figures, the numbers at the end of the year. If you want to look at the volume of trade in terms of quantity, and they want to look at the value, which is very important. The value is even more than the volume. Because we have the situation where uh, research has shown that there were about 5,088 different products you know, exported to UK. But the value of all these 5,088 products yes, was just 9 billion US dollars. Just 9 billion, okay. you know, out of the 5,088. So the products could just be just 10, 50, 100, but then the value could be one trillion US dollars. Okay. So it is more about the value, okay. but not the volume. Okay. So uh, the, the reigns of Prince Charles, uh, perhaps being, as you said, uh, uh, youthful in nature, m should actually bring to bear okay. uh, the contemporaries okay. and not the. Thank you. Thank uh, you, the, Doc. From um, the ancient ones. Thank you, sir. And um, some have described the Queen of England as evergreen, a woman who outlived. You know, Roosevelt, Truman, and shook hands, yeah. shook hands with That's virtually right. all world leaders. She was <laughs> and continues to be a chief global diplomat. Yeah. Her shoes, certainly she wears mook, and this young man doesn't <laughs> wear a pair. He wears a pair of shoes. Yeah. Would you say her shoes are too big for younger members of the royal family to occupy? Yeah. I think at a certain point in time, they thought it was. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years back, they thought... Prince Charles wasn't, 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 wasn't very ready for the job yet. And you but know, no. the palace has its own way of making its own assessment. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they'll give it a bit more time. But I don't think Prince Charles will, have, uh, will swing a little bit from the norm or the protocols that surrounds the, 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 monarchy. the monarchy and, in effect, um, the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth has a philosophy. Until the philosophy changes, nothing can change. You know, the philosophy doesn't change because Prince Charles says, look, I want this to change. No, it doesn't. There has to be a concerted effort. And, and, and remember, it wasn't a group of persons who decided that the Commonwealth must be set up. It was the British who decided that this must be done. That makes it their and baby. The truth, and the that truth, is a fact. The truth of the matter is uh, yeah. that this was done. The truth be told, this was done after, after countries started agitating for independence. For the cleverness of the British, they said, look, we cannot let these people Yes. Who's hanging? Let's hold on to that. 
if it is trade, we will trade with them. India has about one billion people that we will trade billion. with them. Pakistan is there, Nigeria is there, Ghana is there. So we have to hold them. What they haven't done well is to have propped up these countries to appreciate the Commonwealth like they should do. Mm -hmm. So now, with time, and money being as, uh, 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 difficult to come by, they are not sure how to manage this. So it becomes like a, a party, a party. Oh, every two years, let's go and sit down somewhere in London, have a, a cup of tea and eat some sausages, and then we we'll all go back, and then next time we'll see what's happening. But when you look at the philosophy, <laughs> it is a little bit easier. But to be in a group and have these uh, principles that you want to abide by, we therefore have to find out what is it in there, what, 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 what is in it for us. And I say the, the, the Secretariat will have easy access to the WTO. The WTO, I, I had somebody talking a few days ago, as to our input in the WTO, is almost zero. It's almost zero. And if it is zero in the WTO, you can almost assume that for the Secretariat in the UK, we have almost little, not doing nothing there. We have to wake up. If there's such an institution, and I'm being told there are facilities there, send your task force to get in there. Our business minister here should be up and coming. He should be waking up and say, look, Brexit what? Come on, what what? Let's get on there. Let's look. You cannot employ people in Ghana. The employment rate we have, you don't be able to employ all the people in Ghana here. Half of them will have to perhaps get jobs outside the country. And uh, that's why I mentioned the, the, the case of the nurses. There are a lot of jobs outside the world that you can you know, negotiate, find ways around the no, platform. No, uh, uh, Mr. Jani, you belong to an older generation. Mm -hmm. And do they treat us as second fiddle to them? Of course, when you go to the UK and you want employment, you need to sit a fresh set of exams. Mm -hmm. And NESO is trained in Kolebu or any nursing institution in Ghana can just not go there and start practicing. Mm -hmm. You have to undergo retraining. Yes. Uh, so isn't this a facade? Because and, and the playing field is not even, it's not equal. The, the, core, the core training in medicine, you would have done it. Then you probably have to understand a bit of the culture and the, the tenets of how the environment works. And that might take you two, three, four, five, six months. Yeah, but, but, but UK nurses and doctors come in, they walk straight into the theater. Yeah. They, well, don't, understand. they I mean, don't need to know your culture to treat okay, you. If you have a CT scan with the very sophisticated AI equipment attached to it, and we don't have one here, almost invariably when you get there, you need to be educated on how to use this equipment before you get onto the field. Okay. So, you know, it is a sensible thing to do, okay. and you need to go. If they come here, they also have to understand language. So sometimes you have to employ another nurse to say, look, what exactly is this lady saying? So that you can interpret it into treatment plans. So it's a good thing. Mo a lot of nurses who find themselves out there retrain a few months, and they are in the system for years. And look at the benefits for Ghana if they go and they send money for funerals and school fees and all that. Huge sums of money. So this, this point is a very, very important point. I also understand that it's, it's been lying in the Ministry of of health for some time. He's been there for years, but I don't know how, why they've never been able to do anything about it. Okay. Um, Honorable Caesar, you left behind your apparel of Pan-Africanism. I thought you would be all guns blazing, man, <laughs> but it looks like everybody around this table is a bit apologetic. We know it's a ploy to continue to build influence over us, but then it's okay, but no concrete benefits, mm. so to speak. Yeah, me, my argument has continued to be that you mentioned it. It's a voluntary, you know, kind of organization mm -hmm. of various, you know, countries. And so Ghana is not being forced to join Commonwealth. But we think that it's like, uh, 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 I mean, leaning against a particular, you know, uh, uh, pillar. If I feel that if I lean against this pillar, I am very strong and I can do whatever I do. Fine, you go. The idea of joining, you know, or belonging to this body, it's not a bad thing. What we need to talk about is giving us the fairness. And for the, for the first time, you know, I have come to realize or appreciate that the Commonwealth of yesteryears is not the Commonwealth of today. To the extent that even the Queen saying that my son Prince Charles is going to, you know, uh, succeed me. Wasn't that a unilateral decision? Could no, it not have been put to what, a vote? No, but that was not a, an mm. imposing. 
she just suggested it and left it with the heads of, you know, states, I mean, the various, you know, heads of state at the meeting to now come out with a concrete decision can, on that. Can you refuse what the Queen says? No, no. it's just like, <laughs> what happened in your party? Can you refuse the queen, what the Queen says? Rollins raised um, <laughs> Prof. Milton's <laughs> hand in Suedro. There's and very little it, you can do yeah, to resist it. But I'm saying so that... Perhaps he's been foisted no, on uh, but what heads we, of that's, government. And that's what we need to talk about. The membership of the Commonwealth now, especially the various heads of states, they should now, they should not behave like that. They should come out of that kind of, you know, stereotype uh, way of accepting decision being imposed on them. I heard a lot of people, even pinpointing other people who could even be heading the Commonwealth better. Remember, there's now sub a subtle agitation against even the monarchical kind of governance. Even within UK itself, there are a lot of people who are now even coming up, up in arms against the monarchical way of you know, governance. And so a time will come, we will not have that kind of, you know, influence from that particular, you know. What time? This woman has done close to six decades. Yeah, you know something? Man. This young man could be there. So this you wait. Prince Charles could be there for three more decades or two no, more decades. You wait and see when Prince Charles takes over. It's going to be a revolution. I'm, 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 I'm not predicting, but I'm saying that I am foreseeing that, you see, the, 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 the queen has done a lot for many countries in the world, even including countries that are not Commonwealth countries. It's, it, it, the Queen has helped in settling disputes and all those kinds of things. So there's some kind of reverence and respect for her to the extent that when she even says anything, people say, okay, well, let's allow the whole of this old lady to pass. For, I mean, because she's no more uh, going to be on air for that, all this while. And so if they give the note or they accept Prince Charles, it's as a result of that special respect they have for the mother. But I can assure you that from thence, that kind of revolution of people now thinking that, no, we cannot still go by this kind of monarchical way of governance. There should be a change. And so within the Commonwealth itself, you wait and see if, uh, uh, what is the name, Prince Charles is going to uh, 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 take over, and after his, the expiration of his lesson, it will go out of the Birmingham uh, uh, Palace or whatever. <laughs> Birmingham Palace. Uh, yes, I think yes. at some point, yes. the royal family may run out of candidates for the Commonwealth. So really? has this not been an opportune time for us to embrace the revolution on what he's talking about and the reforms we discussed earlier that perhaps someone from an African country uh, would become the head of uh, and the Commonwealth or some power would be given for you to act as a deputy. Uh, to well, Prince Charles, so to speak. Something. You know, Gordon Brown even suggested that the headquarters should be relocated, I think, to South Africa. Uh, when Gordon Brown was there, uh, some years ago, he suggested that the Commonwealth Secretariat should be moved to an African country like South Africa. But, not, but, but, but not such the head, not the head of the Commonwealth. Um, such um, subtle voices have not been impactful. No, uh, uh, the uh, Secretariat. Uh, yeah. That would have helped. That, but <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, maybe, maybe. That so, would be maybe. the beginning <laughs> point. Maybe so. No, but the UK Prime Minister himself doesn't want too much power. He's the Queen. Yes. Even though she's a ceremonial a, head of the United Kingdom, yes. she wants more power than the, the Prime Queen Minister. Is a but, very that was, powerful woman. but that was a Nobel suggestion given. She's a, very first time. she's a very strong woman, you say. And, you know, she doesn't grant interviews, she doesn't speak much, but her word. What she, says, so. what she says goes. And in, in UK, what I know is that there, there's been some, you know, they've been there for too long, and these things are bound to happen. But they also benefit a lot from, 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 the, from the institution itself because of tourism. You know, a lot of people are fascinated. Even the Americans are fascinated by the ra, 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 what, what they want to find their buildings, what they eat, and how they talk, the clothes they wear. It's an institution that across the world, the Chinese who travel just go and take pictures from the castle. <laughs> so it creates huge sums of money for them. The British are not daft. They are very clever in the way they manage certain things. So I think this will go, go on for some time. As for people to inherit the, the, the truth, a lot of children that have been born now, they will always be people there. there. It's, the, it's the public that they will test all the time as to whether public resentment is getting too huge. And then they will so see how they reform it. And will taxpayer yeah. money 
be propping up the royal family in the UK forever? At some point, can they bid good riddance to this conservative way of looking at the United Kingdom and its influence around the world? So you're looking at the extent to which there may be some amount of revolution which would reveal the democratic structure of the British uh, government. And that's what he mentioned. You see, and that is the reason why earlier when I talked about the fact that the, uh, the succession to the throne by Prince Charles may bring about several modifications. The underlying objective of the Commonwealth. Prince will not Charles, does he come to Africa? No, uh, well, I think he's been here before. Yeah. Is no, it the underlying he objective? To the, to, the, uh, to the east. He goes to Pakistan and those places. Yeah. So I don't see the Africanness in this, you know, her apparent, so to speak, uh, to the leadership of the Commonwealth. Let's speak for the interests of Africa, black no, Africa. It, it, it is, it is. But you realize the Queen, you know, besides the independence when she came to Ghana, you, you can count the number of times she has visited the country. If I should put the it whole continent. I'm even talking about, even, if you even narrow it down to Ghana, after independence and then the Republic Day that she came, you can count the number of times she has been here indirectly, no. You know, so the number of times she has visited, you can count. However, even from the Buckingham Palace, she has been influential in the assistance that British, you know, as a people, you know, provide for other countries. So it might not be the physical presence, but then the extent to which the person's position helps you to achieve the economic objective you are looking for. And so on the basis of that, uh, when uh, uh, Mr. John mentioned that uh, the, uh, the succession to the throne by uh, Prince Charles wouldn't change much. Nobody expects to change the underlying principle. But you see, he should foresee some of the agitations mm -hmm. that is mentioned. And he could quickly you know, dance to the tune of some of the member countries so that he will calm down nerves. And there will be what? Free flow of uh, activities within the Commonwealth. That is what I expect him to do. That's what I mean by he will try to revolutionize, uh, assess the situation, and then conform to some of the requirements. The Queen might be very rigid, but as once again, Caesar mentioned, some will say, well, let's allow her because uh, for after how many more years, yes. you know, but then with uh, someone who may be longer, you would expect that he would come to terms with contemporaries and then be able to adapt some of the suggestions that leaders are now putting across. And I, I'm sure he has been taking note of some of these things, but might be sitting back because he does not weigh too much power. But when given the opportunity, he may implement some of these suggestions so that uh, there would be uh, some amount of serenity you know, within the system and we'll be able to uh, move on as expected. So that is very, very uh, important. May, may I just come in here? Uh, one area that should be a closer of yeah, acts, so One area that Prince Charles has yeah. given it is that say, his son has married, is going to marry a girl very soon. In whose, May. Whose in last May. talk is yeah. a bit different from the what we call. So those are some of the things that they are now accommodating. So, yeah, so, so we wait to see how, yeah. how they get on with it. Gentlemen, we have just um, one and a half minutes mm. to, um, okay. to finish. Uh, I'll repeat the question I asked in the preamble. Okay. Do you think the Commonwealth Honorable Caesar is still relevant and should Ghana continue to maintain its commitment and membership to it? Yeah, obviously, yes. I think that in spite of the uh, challenges and uh, difficulties that the Commonwealth you know, has faced over the years, I think it's still very, very relevant. Uh, because if you take the Commonwealth Games alone, that's since the inception they have instituted. It was all kind of for fake journalists to go to <laughs> Australia. It's just this kind of <laughs> it's, 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 has mentioned a strong point. It's an opportunity for uh, the athletes of the member countries you know, to test their... Yeah, but you exploited it. You took fake See, journalists to Australia. Instead of Ghana, it's, this, a, this it's, this a, it's a case in isolation. I said that with Sang in this, 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 this game that it has instituted alone has yeah. helped foster some yeah. kind of unity. unity yeah. It has helped in the cultural exchange. Mm -hmm. Remember, one of our young girls, musician, Rayella, was given the opportunity to perform at the Commonwealth Games. That alone is an important, you know, a milestone. And so I think that in spite of all the challenges, Commonwealth is still very relevant. You know, the president, I'm told, I read somewhere, 
even uh, talked about supporting uh, the candidature of Prince Charles, if actually, I mean, uh, as the Queen has suggested. And so I think that if the only thing our leaders can do for us is to advocate some kind of changes as the years go by, where we can have more benefits to ourselves as a member country. Mr. Jani, should Ghana and the rest of the third world stay the course? I think you should do. Any, any huge organization like the Commonwealth is worth the while. What we have to do is to find ways and means of how to you know, have a better script to, do, to deal with them. And um, it's not only the Commonwealth, but any non government organization that with also some head of states, we must have access to them, talk to them, and see what, how we can deal and make Ghana a better place, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. To, you see, with the games, it actually serves as a springboard for the member countries' athletes yeah. you know, to prepare for major games like the Olympics so, and, it is, and then the World Cup. So it's a very good one. Now, uh, if you look at it, our, our discussions are for to mention one uh, important factor. Uh, the chief Emeka Enyaoko of Nigeria was the Commonwealth Secretary General for a very long time. And if you look at after 2000, 2001, 2002, the former president, Kufo, had to you know, support the candidacy of uh, Dr. Spio Gabra to work at the Commonwealth. Yes, so we have actually had some people who have held some sensitive positions, okay. you know, and we believe that those positions or those appointments wouldn't be the end but we'll be able to uh, have strong positions to influence the activities. And at the apex of it, as I mentioned, we expect some amount of modifications in the way uh, things are managed with regards to generality of the operations of the Commonwealth. So okay. there is hope for the future. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I've been in the studios with Honorable Caesar Kale a former presidential staffer, one of the 600 and something, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you so much <laughs> for making time. Thank you very much. And then Mr. Kuku Jani, <laughs> and founder of um, a policy think tank on matters of foreign affairs. Thank you for Thank having you so me. much, Thank sir, for, for being me. here yeah. all the time. And then Dr. Ebenezer Ashley, an economist. Doc, thank you for making time. Thanks for having me. Okay, all too soon we've come to yet again another edition of World View. And this show has been ably produced by Celestina V and the rest of the crew. So we come your way next week with another edition stabilized. So. Uh